There are 10 steps to a scientific project. The first step is to select an interesting topic and ask a measurable question. So, a measurable question is something you can measure. If you um, can measure it by numbers, um, how many feet something is, how many inches something is, how many times something happens. So think about it. Is it something you can actually measure by counting, by, by distance, by um, some form, of, by degrees, some form of measurement that you can, that you can by weight, that you can um, do with that question. So I'm going to give you a few examples and then we're going to talk about the different categories of questions. So the first example is the question was, does fresh ground flour make better biscuits than store-bought flour? Now that's kind of a hard one on measuring it, but we'll talk about that project a little bit later through the series. The next one is, do different liquids change bone strength? And the way she measured bone strength was by how far she could bend it um, by degrees, so that was measurable. This one, does a person's age or gender affect the memory techniques that will work best for them? So the memory techniques, she was able to measure that by counting the number of nouns that the person could remember, whether it was through visual or auditory or kinesthetic. So that was a measurable question. Down here, does the weight of the paper affect how a paper airplane will fly? That is measurable. You measure the distance of how far the planes could fly with the different weights of paper. On this one, the question was, how fast will ice melt on different surfaces? She was able to measure by taking a certain exact amount of time for each ice cube on the different surfaces, weighing them before the time and after the time, and then finding the difference so she knew how much they, they melted. And this last example is what causes smells to dwindle the fastest? That was also a hard question to measure, but she was able to, to measure it by timing, by smelling um, a, a, an item and timing how long she could smell it before the smell went away. And that's called a factory fatigue. So she was able to measure that by the time. So um, different topics that you can use for um, the scientific method. The different categories are animal sciences, behavior on social science, biochemistry, cellular and molecular biology, chemistry, computer science, earth and planetary science, engineering, electrical and mechanical, and that would be a scientific side of that, um, energy and transportation, environmental management, environmental sciences, mathematical sciences, medicine and health sciences, microbiology, physics and astronomy, and plant sciences. The best way to help find a topic is to think about the things that you ask questions about, your own curiosity. What do you, what are you interested in? I like to, whatever the age of the students, I like to encourage them to go to the library when they come up with a subject, like um, for the olfactory fatigue one, my daughter, um, she asked why something smelled. Um, or what it was, and then a few minutes later she noticed she couldn't smell it anymore. Well, I wasn't sure what that was called, so we went to the, um, to the library and just found a bunch of books about the olfactory um, system and read about it, and I'm talking low-level books. I like to get the little picture books, no matter what the age of the student, because it gets to the heart of a subject really fast. So one really good resource is the library, and just take whatever field you're interested in, get a bunch of science books which, with a bunch of pictures, get a real high level view of that topic, and then decide if that's the direction you want to go with a question. Another, another thing you can do is um, go to, there's a lot of websites with questions, um, and scientific questions. Science Buddies is a great resource, so they have thousands of, over a thousand questions about different topics that you can use, different questions, but I highly recommend that you come up with something unique, that it's something that is interesting to you. Don't fall into the, um, the pit of doing the same thing that a thousand people have, have done. In other words, don't make a volcano. Too many science fairs, too many volcanoes. Try to come up with something that's unique to something that's interesting to you.